Hey guys, here's an awesome carne asada recipe that I make, I love. Um, and you'll see how all these ingredients come together, but you can take a peek at this and uh, maybe write down what you see and uh, prepare for it. I don't end up using the mushrooms. Those are optional if you want to make some of that. Uh, sharp knife, very important, so make sure you have one of those. Guacamole as well, and uh, here we go. All right, guys, so we're gonna make some simple, but amazing, delicious carne asada. Um, what you need, you gotta prep it ahead of time so it has time to marinate. Um, you actually have a kiwi here. The, uh, this kiwi will smash it up and mix it in too because the, so there's some enzymes in kiwi that actually helps protein break down a little bit if you're not gonna let this marinate overnight. If you do it overnight, you don't need the kiwi, but you don't even necessarily need it all. I've done this quick before, and but it's all good. So, But I like to add it in there. Um, so I'm just gonna start with like general prep. Um, I usually do uh, the cilantro at the very end because it makes my board hecka dirty while I'm trying to like clean, uh, chop it all up and uh, the steak, you'll see that too, but you want to first start with um, just chopping up some of your small ingredients. With jalapenos, I want to take the seeds and the ribs out and toss that aside, and I'm going to cut down and try to cut right past all the ribs and the seeds, so I just get the meat, and uh, for time's sake, I'm not going to go, th I'll, I'll do that to the whole thing, I have two jalapenos worth um, that I'll, I'll do that for, but here's how I do it to get the jalapeno real small, because you want it little cubes. Lay it on this side, and take your knife, a sharp knife, and you're going to make little skinny slits down the jalapeno like that and uh, and then you can take it back and then a real real small just want to rock back and forth and you can see you get real tiny little cubes so I'm going to finish chopping this up and I'll toss that in the bowl and we'll go to the next ingredient get our limes out you want to take the limes kind of press them and squeeze them down roll them like that it'll help you get all the juices out of them uh, one large lime would work too, but I use two. And I don't even try to get all the juice out, but I just want to get it loosened up. Chop it in half, grab the halves, dump them over, squeeze them out. There you go. You got your lime juice in there. Like, so you don't have to get all of it, but just as much as you can without stressing over it. And then I'm going to be chopping some onions next. Uh, cut off the stem end, make a little cut, peel off a layer so you, you don't have to worry about all that paper in your way. And uh, then you're going to get your onion down on your board. Chop it right through the bearded side, and I think here I'm showing. I was narrating it as I was doing it, but I think at an awkward moment, so I'm just overdubbing it right now. But just kind of showing you how I easily chop an onion to get a real nice even dice on it. So you can chop through it a little bit like that. Make sure sure your knife's real sharp. Um, that helps, otherwise you'll destroy your fingers. Make some slices that way. Make some real thin slices back. I don't know which which way is horizontal or vertical. Let's just say this is vertical. Make some real nice thin vertical slices, and then come back through. Make some. You're gonna see me in a second. Just make some horizontal chops. It's an easy way without, you know, getting into the tear zone too easy to make some real nice and control how thick you dice your onions. You want them fairly small on this one, both for garnish and for marinade. Get our cilantro. We're gonna chop it, and chop it, and chop it down. About two thirds of the cilantro for the marinade, and a third aside for some garnish and to toss into our coleslaw. So just keep chopping it down and down and down and down. I just I keep chopping until you almost have like a cilantro paste. And then that's going to be going into the bowl with our mixture. I also smashed up that kiwi earlier and tossed that kiwi in. So that was good. And uh, then we'll be adding some olive oil and stuff into the mixture as well after this. And stirring all that around and it'll be ready for our steak to go in so this is uh, a really great simple marinade get you the flavors and then you can add that seasoning onto the meat I'm just gonna add my oil into my my uh, seasoning mix I kinda forget my my wife is filming for me and uh, usually I'd have her do one of these steps to help me so I don't contaminate stuff so I'm just gonna put like a couple tablespoons of olive oil I'm gonna mix up this mixture just so it's already done I'm about to pile a bunch of meat on top of it and what I'm going to do, so I don't get gross stuff all over everything, um, just real lightly. Like I said, it's a lot easier when I have the salt free because I can control my salt. But this is going to have salt in it, um, which I take a little more salt than some people because I sweat like crazy. Uh, and uh, that's just me. So I've laid this all out so it's nice and flat. And I'm just going to sprinkle just a tiny, tiny bit on here and just kind of like tap it down on each of these. And what I'll do is I'll add a whole bunch of cracked pepper later to the mixture before I... I uh, turn it around. So do that. We're in there, so I'm going to let this marinate for about 
three hours and then I'm going to pull it out so it comes up to room temperature. It's really important when you cook this kind of steak because it cooks so fast you get it to room temperature so let it sit out for a while so that way when you throw it in your broiler or on your real super hot grill it cooks real real fast on the outside and gets that char you flip it you, you cook it that way but you haven't burnt the absolute crap out of your meat so anyways it'll be awesome uh, you guys are gonna love this as we get going forward and uh, thanks for watching so far we're back it's been three and a half hours that this has been uh, sitting in our meat mixture I also chopped up some lime some cilantro and onion for garnish for later but for, we're gonna pull all this out I'm gonna pull all this meat out and set it up and then we'll get ready to put it in the broiler. Alright, I got my pan out of my broiler. Um, I have a cooling rack on here. Um, it acts kind of as a grill rack. I just did a sample piece so you can see. That way I knew exactly uh, if the seasoning was okay. You should always try to do that. Sample some, make sure you season it right. And then uh, I'm going to spray this rack down with some spray. Just so my stuff doesn't, you know, have a chance of sticking. And then get my meat. And I'm going to be just sticking it on the rack like so and then I'll be sprinkling a little additional seasoning I kinda eyeballed how much extra seasoning I would need and I'll be doing that and we'll put in the broiler in a minute alright so this is uh, my last batch I did one batch which is resting right now and this batch is gonna go in the broiler for three and a half minutes on the first side and then three minutes on the other side you wanna get nice black crispiness so that's gonna vary depending on your broiler um, but I'll see you guys back when that is done I pull out the broiler, it's got a flip sides on it, and it'll go back in for another three minutes. Alright, out of the broiler, it's finished up, that looks good, you can see the steam. We're going to drop it into the pan with the other meat to rest, and then get a couple more goodies, and then we'll finish up. And this is a little bonus, you get some green onion, you can spray them with some olive oil, non-stick spray. Throw some more of that seasoning over them. If you've never had uh, grilled up, kind of charred green onions with your stuff, it's awesome. So we'll check that back when we're done. We're toasting up some corn tortillas. I'll cover this with plastic so they rest. They'll steam a little bit, get softer because they're crispy right now, but at least they'll have a little crisp on them. Um, I have just enough for my wife and I for this meal. And here's our charred up grilled green onions to add to everything. And complete dish is going to be showing you guys in just one second. So this is a finished product, it's all kind of deconstructed, we made a quick slaw with a little bit of olive oil and white wine vinegar, a little cilantro and red onion in there, that mix is already at the store so it's really quick. I have my canned uh, jalapeno carrot mix, these are amazing. Um, some really great sauces for your tacos, um, some carne asada and uh, our garnishes. What I'm going to do right now too for all of the, you mac anal macro people is I'm going to drop in my scale, I'm going to weigh out my meat. I'm going to eat a ton of this, so when you make it, you can weigh out as much as you want. I'm going to eat at least 8 ounces. That's 8 ounces right there. Maybe more later, but that way I can keep track of my macros. And this is uh, a great meal, guys. And I know some of you out there, if you're Hispanic, you're like, that's not real carne asada. It's just carne asada. It's not maybe real nor authentic, but it tastes amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to make it on your own. And... Uh, you know, eat good and have a great day. <laughs> All right, guys, here's the final plated tacos. I ended up eating another four ounces, so I had 12 ounces total. You'll see those macros in a second. Thanks for watching this video. Make it, enjoy it, like it, and uh, hope to make some more for you guys soon. Have a great day. Eat well, train hard. See you guys later. <laughs>